Greener Grounds is a, is a coffee shop in a sense. Um, we also roast our own coffee, but we've also gotten into using local products, local food, um, organic, vegan, vegetarian foods, um, kind of sell local products. So we've kind of become a part of the local economy. We just in a casual conversation one morning with some friends drinking coffee outside, I made the comment that I would love to open a coffee shop and we started talking about a coffee shop that we frequent in Nashville sometimes. And, and I said, well, you know, we could do this. We could order some fair trade organic coffee. And I went through some, you know, companies that do that. And our friend was said, well, well, can't you just roast your own coffee? And we thought, wow, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not that difficult. So we spent a whole year researching how you roast coffee and no clue. No clue where beans come from, and then I was really into the whole idea of fair trade because I, I was familiar enough to know that a lot of the coffee farmers, chocolate farmers, tea farmers um, were being really exploited by companies in the United States. And I wanted to make sure that what we did was fair and the people were getting the money. We're still small enough that most of our shipments come in either five pound, pound vacuum packed uh, plastic bags or a 40 pound vacuum packed bag. Uh, we take the green beans um, you know, from the different origins that they come from and sift through them to make sure that there's not anything you know, in there. They've already been cupped prior to, but I always check. Um, being green beans goes into the roast. They're weighed up first, depending on how many pounds I want to roast of that particular bean. Uh, they go into a roaster. Takes about 15 to 20 pounds for the roaster because it incrementally raises temperatures and then it gets to a plateau and stays there. Um, so 15 to 20 minutes to get up to temperature around 450, 500 degrees inside the roaster. And then, um, then we start to roast. Um, coffee beans are a lot like peanuts. Uh, once they get to a certain stage, we call it first crack, they start to, the, the moisture is inside the bean that starts to volatize. And then it will cause, it comes to the top of the surface just like a kernel of popcorn. Um, of course with that, you know, you see the fluffy kernel when it pops. With coffee, you see it started shedding its skin like a peanut. So that's called first crack. Now that will happen for about anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute and a half. And it's a very slow pop with, you know, lax time between it. And then you'll start hearing a, a more frequent crack, kind of like what I like to call, refer to as Rice Krispies. That's the second crack. Now at this point, that's when the sugars start to caramelize and you start getting your differences in the roast. So it is kind of a scientific method. We, we actually got involved in Sky Farmers Market. Um, there are two farmers market in town, but one of them we had a passion for because they actually abide by a house bill that says that you have to grow, produce, make, whatever it is has to be made in this area, at least in Kentucky, if not in the county regions right around us. So most of the people are Warren County, Butler County, right around us. So I was roasting last year just for the farmer's market each week, which was Saturday, so we, we weren't able to go on the Tuesday. But we would go on Saturday only from 7 to 12. We were, I was roasting about 25 hours a week. By the time you take the flavoring, the, the weighing, the roasting, the bagging, the labeling, each one of our bags is labeled, you know, you can feel the love because it's actually printed there at home and it's labeled right there and, and we, we do it all ourselves. So we were spending about 25 hours a week just to do the farmer's market. And we're doing that plus some now for the cafe. The other thing that we do is anyone has bought, bought our coffee is, um, which was my passion and I guess probably a little bit more than hers was rescued animals. Um, active in the Humane Society, I'm one of the board members there, so we decided to name all of our coffees after rescued dogs. So you'll have a Buddy's Bark or a Buster's Brawn or a Chloe's Casa Blend and all of our coffee roasts and or blends flavored because we have about 23 flavored coffees are named after rescued dogs. Either ours, our friends, our families or someone else that's near and dear to our heart. You know, as I've gotten into this and I've gotten older and it's taken me back to really where I used to be. I used to be a really local girl that thrived on local products. You thrived on socialization with the farmer next door to say, hey, my tomatoes, you know, I still have tomatoes and oh really, well, I still have cucumbers. You want to swap out some? And that whole process of the camaraderie, the socialization and just the small town feel. And I, and I think for me, that's the thing that's it's really, I would think, makes me come into myself at this point in my life. And the coffee roasting is just something on the side that, you know, I can learn a new trade and I can do something and I can socialize with people and we can talk about things that are important to us, like our animals, like our gardens, like sharing and keeping it here that I don't have to 
have something that, that went through you know, 40 sets of hands before I got it. We tend to use green products, so all of our cups are made out of compostable materials. Our silverware, or plasticware, is actually made out of cornstarch and stuff like that. So um, we do get that. It's more expensive. It's easier to use styrofoam because it's cheaper. But, you know, and, and you're wasting a lot of money. It's a new startup business, and, and, and you could really save a lot of money by using styrofoam. But, but I think when people come in and pick up our cups and they look at our cup and it says that it's compostable, that it means something to them. Like, wow, look at this. They really are trying. I should do something in my life. There's a sense that, that having a, a place like Greener Grounds can, can make a ripple effect in your community. That one person making, making a difference can, in turn, share that with other people and then they share it with people and so on and so forth until we've actually made a difference.